The overall sharp rebound and recovery of the economy is reflective of our country's strong resilience. India's economic growth in the current year is estimated to be 9.2 percent, highest among all large economies. I recognize we are in the midst of an Omicron wave with high incidence but milder symptoms. Further, the speed and coverage of our vaccination campaign has helped greatly. With an accelerated improvement of health infrastructure in the past two years, we are in a strong position to withstand challenges. I am confident that with Sabka Prayas, we will continue our journey with strong growth. Honorable Speaker, we are marking Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsab and have entered into Amrit Kal, the 25-year-long lead-up to India at 100. Honorable Prime Minister in his Independence Day address had set out the vision for India at 100. By achieving certain goals during Amrit Kal, our government aims to attain this vision. They are complementing the macroeconomic level growth focus with a microeconomic level all-inclusive welfare focus, promoting digital economy and fintech, technology-enabled development, energy transition, and climate action, and relying on virtuous cycles starting from private investment with public capital investment, helping to crowd in private investment. Since 2014, our government's focus has been on empowerment of citizens, especially the poor and the marginalized. Measures have included programs that have provided housing, electricity, cooking gas, and access to water. We also have programs for ensuring financial inclusion and direct benefit transfers. We are committed to strengthening the abilities of the poor to tap all opportunities. Our government constantly strives to provide the necessary ecosystem for the middle classes, a vast and wide section which is populated across various middle income brackets to make use of the opportunities they so desire. This budget seeks to lay the foundation and give a blueprint to steer the economy over Amritkal of the next 25 years, from India at 75 to India at 100. It continues to build on the vision drawn in the budget of 21-22. Its fundamental tenets, which included transparency of financial statement and fiscal position, reflect the government's intent, strengths, and challenges. This continues to guide us. The initiatives of the last year's budget have seen significant progress and have been provided with adequate allocations in this budget as well. The strengthening of health, health infrastructure, speedy implementation of the vaccination program, and the nationwide resilient response to the current wave of the pandemic are evident for all. The productivity-linked incentive in 14 sectors for achieving the vision of Atma Nirbhar Bharat has received excellent response with potential to create 60 lakh new jobs and an additional production of 30 lakh crores during next five years. Towards implementation of the new public sector enterprise policy, the strategic transfer of ownership of Air India has been completed. The strategic partner The strategic partner for Nilanchal Ispat Nigam Limited has been selected. The public issue of the LIC is expected shortly. Others, too, are in the process for 2022-23. Please the no. National Bank for... You will get the opportunity to get the opportunity. Don't do it. The National Bank for Infrastructure Development and National Asset Reconstruction Company have commenced their activities. Honorable Speaker, sir, Budget 2021-22 had provided a sharp increase in provision for 
public investment or capital expenditure. Throughout the year, with the Honorable Prime Minister guiding the implementation, our economic recovery is continuing to benefit from the multiplier effect. This budget continues to provide impetus for growth. It lays a parallel track of, one, a blueprint for the Amrit Kaal, which is futuristic and inclusive. This will directly benefit our youth, women, farmers, the scheduled castes, and the scheduled tribes. And number two, big private public investment. Number two, big public investment for modern infrastructure, readying for India at 100. This shall be guided by PM Gati Shakti and be benefited by the synergy of multimodal approach. Moving forward on this parallel track, we lay the following four priorities. PM Gati Shakti, inclusive development, productivity enhancement and investment, sunrise opportunities, energy transition, and climate action, and four, financing of investments. PM Gati Shakti. PM Gati Shakti is a transformative approach for economic growth and sustainable development. The approach is driven by seven engines, namely roads, railways, airports, ports, mass transport, waterways, and logistics infrastructure. All seven engines will pull forward the economy in unison. These engines are supported by the complementary roles of energy transmission, IT communication, bulk water and sewerage, and social infrastructure. Finally, the approach is powered by clean energy and sabka prayas. The efforts of the central government, the state governments, and the private sector together, leading to a huge job and entrepreneurial opportunities, opportunities for all, especially the youth. PM Gati Shakti Master Plan, National Master Plan, the scope of PM Gati Shakti National Master Plan will encompass the seven engines for economic transformation, seamless multimodal connectivity, and logistics efficiency. It will also include the infrastructure development by the state governments as per Gati Shakti Master Plan. The focus will be on planning, financing, including through innovative ways, use of technology, and speedier implementation. The projects pertaining to these seven engines in the National Infrastructure Pipeline will be aligned and aligned with PM Gati Shakti framework. The touchstone of the master plan will be world-class modern infrastructure and logistic synergy among different modes of movement, both of people and goods, and location of projects. This will help raise the productivity and accelerate economic growth and development. Road transport. PM Gati Shakti Master Plan for Expressways will be formulated in 22-23 to facilitate faster movement of people and goods. The National Highways Network will be expanded by 25,000 kilometers in 2022-23. 20,000 crores of rupees will be mobilized through innovative ways of financing to complement the public resources. The data exchange among all mode operators will be brought on unified logistics interface platform designed for application programming interface. This will provide for efficient movement of goods through different modes, reducing logistics cost and time, assisting just-in-time inventory management, and in eliminating tedious documentation. Most importantly, this will provide real-time information to all stakeholders and improve international competitiveness, open source mobility stack for organizing seamless travel of passengers will also be facilitated. Contracts for implementation of multimodal logistic parks at four locations through PPP mode will be awarded in 22-23. 
Railways will develop new products and efficient logistic services for small farmers and small and medium enterprises, besides taking the lead in integration of postal and railways network to provide seamless solutions for movement of parcels. One station, one product concept will be popularized to help local businesses and supply chains. As a part of Atmanirbhar Bharat, 2,000 kilometers of network will be brought under Kavach, the indigenous world-class technology for safety and capacity augmentation in 2022-23. 400 new generation Vande Bharat trains will better energy efficiency and passenger riding experience will be developed and manufactured during the next three years.